Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamu alaikum. Today's video is for grade 9. I am going to teach unit 5 poem Daffodils written by William Wordsworth. Page number is 51 of textbook. It is basically a lyrical poem of four stanzas. So first of all we will discuss the objectives of today's learning. Today you will be able to learn about the poet and recite the poem, we'll learn new vocabulary and we'll also learn about the figurative language and how to compose a summary and we'll, uh, how to write a paraphrasing of the poem and we'll also learn moral lesson of the poem. Now we will talk about poet. His name is William Wordsworth. He is a well-known poet of nature. He is true worshipper and an ardent lover of nature. He takes nature as a teacher and as a preacher. In this poem, he has depicted healthy, purifying and enduring impacts of nature on human mind and heart. Basically, the poem is about some moments in our life that we replay or recall in our memory images to which photographs or videos can not do justice because they cannot capture our emotions or feelings. So in this lyrical poem, poet has captured both the images and feelings concerned to a special moment in his life. Here in this picture, you can see the pictorial presentation of this poem, Beautiful Daffodils Beside the Lake. Here are some new vocabulary for you that is used in this poem. After knowing their meanings, you will be easily, you will be able to easily understand the poem. The first one is fluttering. It's mean moving in the air glee joy or happiness host in a large number or a group jocund happy twinkle shine with the light pensive thoughtful but here in this poem it's considered as a sad mood solitude pleasant loneliness so student let's recite the poem with proper intonation. I wandered lonely as a cloud by William Wordsworth. I wandered lonely as a cloud that floats on high o'er vales and hills when all at once I saw a crowd, a host of golden daffodils beside the lake beneath the trees fluttering and dancing in the breeze continuous as the stars that shine and twinkle on the milky way they stretched in never-ending line along the margin of the bay ten thousand saw i at a glance tossing their heads in sprightly dance. The waves beside them danced, but they outdid the sparkling waves in glee. A poet could not but be gay in such a jocund company. I gazed and gazed, but little thought what wealth the show to me had brought. For oft, when on my couch I lie, in vacant or in pensive mood, they flash upon that inward eye, which is the bliss of solitude. And then my heart with pleasure fills and dances with the daffodils. Let's discuss the verses in simple language. The very first stanza of the poem, I wandered lonely as a cloud that floats on high 
or wails and hails. The poet describes his loneliness. He is comparing his loneliness, his emotion to an isolated cloud broken off from the rest as he ends around walking over valleys and hills. When all at once I saw a crowd, a host of golden daffodils beside the lake, beneath the trees, fluttering and dancing in the breeze. Here the poet describes stumbling upon a large crowd, large crowd, thousands of daffodils. He notices them dancing in the breeze. The breeze is allowing them to move. Therefore, it seems like they are dancing in breeze. The next stanza continues as the star that shine and twinkle on the Milky Way. They stretch in never-ending line along the margin of the bay. The poet is comparing the mass of stars in the night sky to the large quantity of daffodils before him. He saw thousands of daffodils and it appeared as if they are infinite. Ten thousand I saw at a glance, tossing their heads in a sprightly dance. The poet emphasizes the amount of daffodils he can see. He uses the word sprightly here, which means lively, full of energy. But sprightly comes from the word sprite. A sprite was a Greek fairy, which is inhabited of nature. So the poet uses this word subtly as if almost describing the daffodils as lively sprited fairies. The waves beside them dance, but they outdid the sparkling waves, waves in glee. The poet now describes the waves dancing along with the daffodils, but the daffodils appear to be happier than the waves, and they therefore outdid them with happiness. A poet could not be but K. In such a jocund company, the poet shows that his loneliness has disappeared, has changed into happiness and gay because of his company. Here, his company, his friends are waves and daffodils. He is referring to the daffodils and the waves as being his companions, his friends. I gazed and gazed, but little thought what wealth the show to me had brought. The poet explains that even though he was amazed and loved watching the daffodils, he did not think he acknowledged the scene show that was before him. For oft, when on my couch I lie in vacant, or in pensive mood the poet tells us that he usually lies in his on his couch in a blank vacant blank disinterested pensive sad in a sad mood however pensive usually refers to the thoughts of sadness therefore when the poet lies on his couch he is usually blank in a blank state or quite sad they flush upon that inward eye, which is the bliss of solitude. The poet describes that when he is unhappy, the memory of the daffodils flushes across his field of vision and bring him happiness. The memory is his and his alone, and therefore it's joyful in a way because it is his memory alone. And then my heart with player fills and dances with the daffodils. So whenever the images of daffodils is displayed in his memory, in poet's memory, it makes his feeling of loneliness disappear just like when he first saw them. His heart matches the same happiness of daffodils and dances along with them.
ओके स्टूडेंट्स विलियम वर्सवर्थ हैज यूज लॉर्ड्स ऑफ इफेक्टिव टूल्स इन दिस पॉइंट बट वी विल हाईलाइट बेसिक टेक्निक्स अकॉर्डिंग टू योर लेवल फर्स्ट वन इज पर्सोनिफिकेशन पर्सोनिफिकेशन एंड द सेकेंड वन इज सिमिली मेटाफोर एंड ड्राइविंग स्कीम एक्चुअली दीज आर लिटरेरी टेक्निक्स और इफेक्टिव टूल्स टू मेक पोइट्स वर्क रिमार्केबल सो आई एक्सप्लेन द फर्स्ट दैट इज पर्सोनिफिकेशन वन पोइट गिवस ह्यूमन क्वालिटीज टू नॉन ह्यूमन थिंग्स I have taken the examples from the poem I saw a crowd a host of golden daffodils basically the crowd word is connected with human being a large number of human being but here poet has used this word for daffodils so he is inwardly assigning the qualities of human to non human object daffodils the second one is tossing their heads and dancing okay again poet has given the human quality to non human things actually the tossing heads and dancing both actions are related to human beings but here poet is giving these quality to daffodils here is another strong example of example of personification and the next is but be gay in such a jocund company as i have already told you the meaning of jocund company it means uh, energetic company of friends but here he is not talking about the human beings he is not talking about his human friends he is talking about his jocund company that that is the company of daffodils and the company of waves also the next literary technique is simile when poet compares two nouns by using words as or like here are some example from the poem lonely as a cloud lonely as a cloud the very first verse of the poem poet is saying that he is lonely he is he is comparing himself with a cloud by using the word as similarly continues as the stars that shine again poet is comparing stars with daffodils the clusters of stars with the clusters of daffodils metaphor when poet compares two unlike objects without using the word as or like examples they stretch they stretch in never ending line poet is directly comparing the situation that is in the sky where are the stars the where, where is the cluster of stars that is never ending with the cluster of daffodils he is comparing the clusters of stars with the clusters of daffodils the next technique is rhyming scheme that is a more effective tool uh, used by the poets for for their work uh, to make their work remarkable rhyming scheme of this poem is mentioned here one by one according to the stanzas in the very first stanza the rhyming scheme is cloud crowd hills daffodils trees breeze rhyming scheme means the words that are rhymes with each other and these words come at the 
end of the verse so in in a stanza when uh, words of every verse that come at the end rhyme with each other then we say that it the poem has a strong rhyming scheme other stanzas rhyming scheme is mentioned here you can see before going onward i will explain the tone of the poet also you have seen that in the very start of the poem poet was saying that i am lonely like a cloud okay he is comparing himself with cloud he was saying that he is lonely but at the end of the poem his tone has changed he is enjoying he has he has a company he has a company of daffodils and he is dancing with them his heart is dancing with them so in the very start the tone of the poet was very sad and gloomy but at the end he is in a joyful mood okay students you have to learn a summary of the poem so you will compose your summary according to this flow chart first of all you will discuss introduction of the poet in two sentences then theme of the poem four to five sentences after this you will briefly discuss the poems happening five sentences but in indirect language mostly poet use a first person pronoun and and they uh, uh, write their poems in uh, direct language but you have to summarize the uh, poem into indirect language you will use the third person pronoun for the poet he or poetess she and the next step is discuss images of the poem or the tone of the poet in three sentences and at the end you will discuss the ethical idea of idea of the poem but before going onward here uh, i will give you a hint or a clue while writing a summary summary don't make tiny paragraphs and don't write your summary in tiny paragraphs in different pieces of paragraphs you will compose a single paragraphs according to these features okay and the next step is paraphrasing so you will follow these key features while paraphrasing of any stanza the first one is reference the second is context and the third is explanation in reference you will write down the name of the poem name of the poet or the location of the stanza also I mean uh, this stanza is taken from the middle of the poem or the uh, ending of the poem or from the beginning of the poem and in the context you will discuss just the main idea in two sentences don't try to uh, exceed from the limitation next step is explanation discuss stanza in simple way but using an indirect language i will discuss now the moral of the poem the nature is full of beautiful sights so we should visit these sights because they are the source to release the stress and tension here is the review of the lecture today we tried to learn recitation and discussion of the poem use of different literary techniques how to summarize a poem and how to write a paraphrasing of a poem and at the end we learn moral of the poem hope so this video will be helpful for you i selected this unit because other two units are easy comparatively this actually this would be more helpful for the new students i've already uh, shared easy and solved notes of english language so this unit was not quite easy without any guidance i'm hopeful that now you would 
easily understand it uh, you can ask for any query thank you very much allah hafiz